legacy I mean, look Nikki, like. I mean, this is about to have another piggyback conversation. What is Nikki without Kim? That's always what I go to when I talk about Nikki. And that's my thing with Nikki. So it's look like we about to have a creative juices conversation today because it's like the juice that she got ain't even hers. That ain't her juice in her cup. She ain't squeezed that. So I came that's in here. That's a little Kim cup. That's a little Kim cup, Mike. <laughs> it's true. And the image wise little, and everything. She's drinking out of a little Kim cup. So it's like when you're asking me what a legacy is, it's like I don't know what it is, but it's somewhere under Kim, like I've been saying. I don't Rap even, wise, stature wise. I don't even think it's that. And it's funny because, like I said, when I came in here earlier and I was talking to uh, DJ Paperboy, he was on the set. And uh, I love getting his perspective as a DJ because he's been around actually DJing in hip hop spots and, you know, being in places where other DJs are. He said he doesn't believe that Nicki should rank too high on the hip hop list because all of her big records are pop records. And she doesn't really have a hip hop foundation like that. We started going through the songs. I was going through different playlists and all of her quote unquote hip hop records either are features or, you know what I'm saying? Or her songs that have Drake and Wayne on it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and so the young money run. Exactly. So going through those playlists, I'm like, yes, yeah, she really doesn't have a true blue, you know, no time crushing you. If we're talking about Kim or if we're talking about Foxy, get you home tonight i'll be and she doesn't really have those go-to hip-hop records she can rap obviously and it really reminds me of the the marshall conversation in that sense because we're talking about skill set up against records she made a choice to make pop records and i think that's kind of why she's going through this slump now because the pop well has ran dry the pop world has moved on now she's trying to come back to hip-hop none of her rap records are connecting she may have allowed herself to be appropriated a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. She didn't balance it. She appropriated herself out, is what I'm saying. As in, she gave her all to the pop culture establishment. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say that it's white. Let's just call it the pop culture establishment. Yeah. She gave her energy and her prime to that. Yep. She's coming back now. It's like it's it's like it's like when it's like when a brother move move out the hood and then he don't never like come back. And like and like see people, but then things fall apart, and where he find himself at? Yeah, back in the neighborhood. So she's back in the neighborhood again. But Mike, this is what I'm yeah. saying. This is what I mean. Like this is why I always be in the neighborhood. People be like, "Coop, you live in Cobb. Like, why you be on the south side and be on the east side?" Because it's like I don't want to forget. I don't want to lose touch. When you forget us and you lose touch, you can't come back. This is not about to be. This not. About, this ain't no welcome home. It reminds me of the second verse of uh, this, this, Ice Cube's "True to the Game." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like on MTV, but they don't care. They will have a new nigga next right. year. Right. That's, that's no what, more black fans and no more soul. Like it's that. Her it's story is that. I know a lot of people don't like to really peg her with that because she's Nikki. And let's just keep it real. She's a female MC. We've never really seen that happen to female MCs before. We've never before. seen a female MC be able to transfer into the pop stratosphere like she has. I so think Missy did her? a little bit of it. Mm, but Missy's a writer. You know what I mean? And an all-around creative. She's a different hybrid. Yeah, she, she's a different she's type a of singer, hybrid. singer, all that. Yeah. yeah Missy at her core is a writer, mm -hmm. a songwriter. Exactly. So that's different. When you're yeah. a songwriter, that transcends and translates everywhere across the board. That's why Babyface can write Take a Bow for Madonna. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's yeah. different. This Nikki thing, I mean, let's be honest with it. A lot of it's about her beauty. It is. Yeah. A lot of it's about her skin tone. A lot of it is about the dollish way and the, the way that she dresses herself up. A lot of the things that make her who she is. But they're not rooted in rap, Mike. And that's what I keep saying. It's like, oh, no, no, no. Lil' Kim shit? That's some rap shit that it's rooted in. We just had a typical rap song conversation. Give me the typical rap song that Nicki has that carries her into the higher echelon of hip hop and, and, artists. And this is what I mean, is that every time you ask me that question, the fact that I have to go back to your love off of Pink Friday. After, listen, after listening it, to that today, that's kind of a pop record too. It is, but that's the closest that she got, and yep. that ain't enough. It ain't. It ain't. I mean, because we I were talking about this album, right? When Kanye did his little pop thing before 808s and Heartbreaks, he made uh, Stronger... But he was able to balance it out with can't nobody can't tell me nothing, right? You know what I mean? Like when you have a, a pop crossover song like Stronger, you have a can't tell me nothing. Nikki never did that. She's gonna do Starships. She's gonna do uh, Super Bass. Ain't no balance. Yeah. And for her to be held high on the hip hop, she made her choice. She wanted to make pop records. I mean, and, and, and she did and, that. And I think this is what's really biting her too, because it's not even just the pop thing. 
oh, you had an attitude while you did all this. Right. You had an attitude like we owed you something. And not we. The females in hip hop owed you something. You had an attitude yeah. while you did it. And let's keep it real. Cardi came in in 2018 and made better rap records than she did, regardless Bodak if Cardi writes her shit or not. Bodak Yellow is better than anything that, that Nicki's ever done. Period. It hits harder and everything. Period. And Bodak Yellow is just better. It is. It's better than any song Nicki's ever done. If you were DJing Fuck tonight like and somebody was paying you to DJ at a hip hop spot, you're going to play Bodak Yellow over any solo Nicki record. You just thought. Easy money. Yeah. They're still playing Bodak Yellow. Yeah. And they should be. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Leroy Green with the Super like Chat says, just playing devil's advocate for a second. Uh, if you come in the game spitting lyrical bars, at what point is it okay to cross over and rock in the world of, I'm sorry, and rock in that world if you have the skills to do so? Again, I think from what I just said about the Kanye thing, you can rock in that world, but give us a record to balance it out. LL Cool J, when he gave us come, Going Back to Cali, balanced it out with another record. I've heard um, I've heard Russell say this before. I mean, I, Russell I, Simmons said he made sure whenever LL made a big record, they had a B-side record that was for the hip-hop streets. I mean, That's all you asked for. Can I interest you in these guys named Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls? Exactly. Why? I mean, if she's like that. If you like that, yeah. then, why, then let it be like that. It's the same. This is what I'm saying. We about to have a creative conversation because it's like, no, y'all talking about Nikki and Dre, like they somebody that they not, Mike. They not that. But people act like Lil Kim didn't make no matter what people say. That was a pop crossover record. So it's how many licks? Yeah, it sure is. And she was still able to show you and that she'll you know still what? do put your light up. Back. Exactly. Thirty six chambers with a twenty dollar super chat showing love. She says, shouldn't we be applauding applauding audiences? I'm sorry artists that expand the reach of hip-hop non-typical rap though uh the thing we say andre and nikki haven't done have actually expanded and evolved the genre overall right isn't that positive i think what outcast has done has expanded i don't really think that what nikki has done has expanded hip-hop as a genre she is kind of just doing what other pop artists have before done before you expand you take care of home mike what's the why, difference why, why, why are people not missing before you expand, you take care of home. You're talking about people that ain't took care of home. What's the difference between Fergie's London Bridges and Super Bass? Ain't no fucking innovation there. You're doing something that other white artists have already done. You're just black. Oh, let's keep it real. Ain't nothing different between London Bridges and Super Bass. How is that innovative? You, you make a very because Nicki did it. You make a very valid point. <laughs> I'm just saying. You ain't got the records, you ain't got the records. Now, as far as the Andre innovation thing, that goes to Outkast. I don't think that goes to That's Andre as an individual. We don't know who Andre is as a creative solo artist. Yeah. Not a rap one. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, I think because the commercial hip-hop market is so dry right now, Nicki has a chance to come back. Radio needs a real hit from stars, uh, and that hip-hop market is dry, right? Guys, I think that, guys, guys, guys. I think We're the industry's moved on from Nicki. We got Ice say. Spice out here. We got Corey LeRae out here. Cardi's probably going to come back with something, whether it be a feature. And let's keep it all the way a buck. And, you know, Paperboy said this, too. Megan's better than Nicki. Megan actually raps. She actually makes rap records. Lotto. Yeah. I mean, Lotto's catalog is short right now. But with the mixtapes and, she, and she raps. Yeah. And regularly. the Tina Snow projects and stuff like that. Like, Megan actually could probably I, beat this, Nikki the, in a, a rap versus. The Nikki thing is fascinating me from this perspective because it's like, let's go back to our core black focal points in music again, Mike, mm -hmm. for our era. When Thriller come out? 82. When did Dangerous come out? That was 92. No, it was not, 91. Now, in nine years, Michael Jackson went from selling 40 million records to about four. <laughs> and y'all think Nikki about to come back and blow the spot? Get the fuck out of here with that <laughs> dumb shit. You see what I'm saying about people just say dumb stuff, Mike, and it don't make no sense? But the thing that is. That don't make no sense, Mike. Queen didn't do well. And she's been releasing singles ever since. Like, she never really stopped. Y'all still listening to Super Freaky Girl or whatever? Like, come on, man. Let's keep. We just got to keep it a buck. <laughs> In nine years, Michael Jackson went from 40 million to four. Because time. Lines. No. Let's say, let's say decline sometimes is just time, mm -hmm. and it's been time. This is what I'll say in Michael Jackson, Jackson's instance. 
he just wasn't as in tune with what was going on as he was in 82. You can't be. You can't. He's not. People forget, like, Michael Jackson on Off the Wall is going out to the club. Yeah. Making Thriller and Off the Wall. Yeah. He's on the scene. Mm-hmm. Him and Quincy know what the music sound like. Yep. Bad's a little bit further away a little, and, and, and missed the mark a little bit because here's the thing. When Bad's getting made, oh, no, no, that's when things start to change. Bobby Brown, my mm-hmm. prerogative. New Jack Swing, Keith Sweat, Teddy Rock. It's starting to hit a little bit different. Hip-hop. He's not as in touch. You know what he told Quincy in the Bad Sessions? He told Quincy that this rap thing was a phase, just like disco. And as he would think that, because he lived through the disco thing. He saw disco come in and out. Quincy tried right. to tell him this thing was here to stay. Right. But Michael wasn't in tune enough to even be for, you right. know, forward thinking enough the, to see hip hop like where the, it was. Like the records that are on Dangerous should be on Bad. Straight like up. Jam. Mm-hmm. Jam should be, nothing against Hev, but Jam should be like with Rakim in 87. Mm-hmm. Right. So he missed it because, well, when you reach a stature, when you reach a status and you get so big, well, it's hard to keep those courtside seats and to see that street view. Well, I mean, you know when you're Michael Jackson and you're able to – you go to a Laker game and they have to stop the game because people are going crazy, you really can't go anywhere. You can't go to it. <laughs> you can't do anything. That's what I'm saying. So if that happened to him, y'all think Nikki the one that's about to come back and crush shit? People are so absurd and unrealistic, Mike. Well – all right, I think that uh, we're just going to have to look and see what these singles uh, bring about. But I think from all time, and we'll move on to uh, the next single because it's kind of our new music segment. Where do you think Nikki fits an all-time list of female MCs all time? I mean, for me, she's not in my top five, but it would be hard to keep her objectively out of a top five due to contributions. But what are my, her contributions? But she's not in my top five, though, Mike. After these conversations today, I find it even hard to put her past – Foxy because again she operated in a mainstream that was empty like she was winning BET awards and they didn't have her up against anybody because at the time even though Rhapsody was putting out albums and stuff Rhapsody wasn't in the mainstream they weren't giving her any kind of push Mike how about this don't Lauren Hill still have more actual rap songs possible fucking Nikki that's possible you see what the problem is with that's what I problem. just said that's I know we're going, we can just transition to Lauren after this. I want you to think about this. I'm going to say this again. I'm pretty certain Lauren may have more full-fledged rap songs still than Nicki. And people don't see anything wrong with that. I'm sick of giving these people who don't work a pass. And I ain't about to let people pull up to a chord in hip-hop. And give Andre <laughs> no working ass a pass. Nicki no rap song making ass a have. They, neither one of them can't make a typical quote-unquote rap song to save their life, Mike. Because we ain't seen them do it. Well, you know what? Mad you Max do, is in the You do building. what you can. You do what you can do. I want to see what Mad Max has to you say. Don't, you don't say, oh, I can do this, so I'm just going to avoid it. Michael Jordan didn't like say, well, I can hit this three-point shot in this 15-footer, so I'm going to stop dunking the basketball You're and right. laying the ball up. You're right. You can't criticize something in your genre and in your space that you haven't even accomplished. It's crazy. Mad Max of the Super Chat says, I see girls play and use Ru- uh, Red Ruby, uh, the sleeping, I'm sorry, the sleep skiing every day. And Cardi, uh, the Cardi disrespect, she can only, she is only in rap tunes, and it is a feature to a hijack. I don't know what Mad Max is saying here. I you think he's talking you. about the Ruby Red record is jamming, I guess. And he's Mad Max don't know what he's talking about. Mad Max, never man, you got to cut the slang so much, man. The shorthand. Jay Short says, devil's advocate. People thought MC Light was done after Lil' Kim, and she managed to have a few hits and features in 97 oh, using Kim's formula in, with Missy. I see what he's saying. He said he said Cardi and Nicki disrespect. She only rap in tune when it's a feature to hijack. He's talking about she only raps that way when she's hijacking a feature is what Mad Max Who, is Cardi? Saying. Yeah. Okay. Melvin Wright with the Super Chat says, did you guys review the Ransom album? If so, uh, what was it rated? Uh, the bars are insane on there. Ransom, stay consistent. We got to talk about Ransom maybe Friday. That's yeah. the music show. Um. But, yeah, as far as that competition, and we'll move on after this, but it's hard to even put her above people like even the Brat, Foxy. Well, I, What do you think about that comparison with the Brat and Nikki? Like, is Nikki even better than the Brat, really? No, she was never better than the Brat. But this okay. is what I'm saying is, it's like, you understand that she can be a legend, but everything that we're saying can be true. It can yeah. be both of those things. People keep – I don't know where we started living in this world where things can't be like mutually exclusive and everything just had to be in this box and everything had to be in that box. Is she a legend? Yes. Does her rap song catalog suck? Yes. <sighs> she, Next. <laughs> I, I, is she top five? And we'll move on. Lauren, Light, Latifah, Kim, 
Foxy next. Okay. All right. Gunna <laughs> dropped his new single uh, this past Friday. We didn't get a chance to speak about it then, uh, but what did you think about the single? I didn't love it. I didn't love it either. I didn't love the tone. Me um, neither. I definitely don't. I don't. The energy. The energy feels bad. The, f- the energy is defensive. Let's just call it what it is. The energy is defensive about yeah. all the rhetoric that's going on. I mean, he's definitely not a beloved figure in this city right now. He's definitely feeling that he's not a beloved figure in this city right now. Yeah. Um. This is one of the situations where the rubber meet, re- meet the road, Mike, where it's like, you know, people start looking at their finances dwindling and start making business decisions that affect, you know, things and everybody knows what's going on down here. But really, at the end of the day, I heard a song that wasn't well produced. We're going to get to that. I, you know what? My thing was after hearing it, it's like, why did you even put this out? Is this more of a confessional thing? I just told you, Mike, finances. Hmm. Finances. Okay. Like you got people. <clears throat> I don't think how long Gunna been around? Gunna's been around for at least 2017 ish. Right. That's only six years, Mike. That's not a long time. Yeah. Like people think that this rap money is bigger than what it is. And, and like he's probably one of the earners and one of the money getters in this thing, too. Oh, but when you live in a lifestyle like he's living and you got the you go gotta work. sit and then the fees and oh, yeah. And then not getting the show money because that's probably gotten a little slow, too. So you got to get something new out there. Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think and also it, I too, think you go for the club banger at this and the point. To- and the tonality is bad because the video is apparently getting shot in Cali and Hollywood. So it's like, oh, so you can't come to the A. So you going Hollywood on us. It's uh. like, uh, they don't look right. The city is not about to eat that. You spoke to about the production part of it. What are your thoughts on that? I think he's in trouble without Metro and Wheezy. Mike, he, he's not one of these guys that we go to for bar work. Yeah. We go, we go to him for the drip too hard. I think what this is showing, a lot of the artists in this generation are, I don't want to say getting carried by producers, but yeah, production is a big part of why they have the wave that they have. Mm. And if you remove that production, yes. what do you have? Uh, like you said, we don't come to him for the bar work, but and I don't know what this next project's going to sound like without me, Weezy me, out of here. Me neither. And he's not, and this is what I mean, is it's like, well, <clears throat> he's not future. And even future need Metro. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I told you, I March Madness, like Future's performances there, that beat is absurd, Mike. Production well, how many, matters. How many artists in this generation don't need a crazy-ass producer to be dope? Because I feel like just about everybody does. There's something to be said for today's artists and what they lack in content and substance as writers. It actually forces the production to be better. What made me, and I thought about this, and we talked about this offline, we always talk about J. Cole's shortcomings when it comes to his production. Yep, I knew you were but his that. legacy honestly should be inflated by the fact that he's like the only person of his era that still gets heralded that doesn't have superstar production everywhere he goes. That just shows you how strong J. Cole is as an individual artist. Hey, I mean, <clears throat> when I criticize Kendrick and criticize Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, when I'm saying the album isn't no good, Mike, I've said repeatedly the main reason that the album isn't any good is the production. You don't like good. the production, Mike. Them beats ain't no good. <laughs> you ain't like the N95 beat, Mike. Them beats ain't no good. Silent Hill. Them beats ain't no <laughs> good. What about the Alchemist joint? That beat ain't no good for Alchemist. Shame on him. I could have heard West Side on it. But what Kendrick do y'all think? Is West the... Side. They're... Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. No, they were no, no, no. Kendra needs a Griselda feature. He needs to get on a Griselda record, but he's not. He need to get on a beat that sound like Brutus or George Bondo is what he need to do. Them beats is terrible. He needs a typical rap song. Very probably. That's gonna be the title of this episode. Typical Typical rap rap song. song. Yeah, Uh, but yes, need some help. I think that inflates. These niggas some beats. (laughs) But yes, gonna need some beats. I think this is a big opportunity. All these new niggas need beats except they do except for Cole. Um, I think this is a big opportunity for an up-and-coming producer to actually work with Gunna. No, because when I think about it, Mike, think about it. What is Kendrick without a dope beat? Backseat what? Freestyle's a dope beat. Mm-hmm. Money Trees is a dope beat. Yep. Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe's a dope beat. Yep. Good Kid, Mad City, the song, that's a dope-ass yeah, beat. Yeah, Mad City, dope Mad beat. Mad City's a great beat. Yeah. Compton, great beat. Mm-hmm. Real, great beat. 
These Walls, mm-hmm. Mortal Man. These are great beats. What you think about the All Right beat? The All Right beat's all right. It's all right. The As beat, I was thinking, the All Right beat's all right. The production on Damn, I thought was probably. DNA? Yeah, DNA's crazy. DNA crazy. I remember when I first heard DNA, uh, me and Ronve was talking about it. Ronve hit me and was like, yo, DNA is crazy. You want to know what it reminded me of? When Feel is crazy. Feel is crazy. But Element. beat-wise, when I heard DNA, you know what it reminded me of? What's that? Remember when Crucial Conflict did Hey? Yep. And you had never heard nothing like that beat-wise before? Boom, 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 mm-hmm. boom, boom, boom. That's what I heard when I heard DNA. It's like, that feels like Hey all over again. Like, in terms of just, like, the shockwave to your ears about yeah. the production. It's like, yeah, he's had great beats. Yeah. Except on this last album. See what happened? I will say this is probably the... What's the best beat on the Kendrick album, Mike? I think Silent Hill or N95. I like the N95's beat. Mike, that shit that's was crazy. The best beat. That's the best beat, Mike. Yeah. I rest my case. N95 had to start the album Beats off. ain't no good. And I think they tried to start it out like they did DNA. You know what I'm saying? I mean, damn, with DNA. And I think that's what N95 was. But there was a big drop They failed that. miserably if that was the goal. I didn't like that beat from um, – I know the Kendrick fans are going to go crazy because we just skipped from Gunner to Kendrick. But I didn't like that beat, the uh, – what's the – the Big Steppers, that song. You know what I'm talking about? That was like, won't, 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 won't. Yeah. Anyway, Leroy no, Green – I don't just... know what you're talking about because I don't listen to it because them beats wasn't no good and them <laughs> concepts was broken and I don't want to go to your therapy session. I can go to my own therapy session. I told you – him, he the one that really started all this mental. It might be my personal life, but he the one that started these mental health issue thing for me. Because I'm like, oh, you want to talk about some mental health issues? Let me show you how to talk about some mental health issues, nigga. Because the way you just did it ain't it. Leroy Green, I'm like, keep on saying it. Don't nobody want to hear you talk about that, man. Leroy Green with the super chat says, "Coop, I got a new artist uh, for you to A and R me, but I don't make typical rap songs." <laughs> hey, 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 look here. We're taking them all under the according to hip hop umbrella, Leroy. Come on down. You're the next contestant. <laughs> typical rap song. Yo, Gunna, you might want to get a typical club banger right now. Look That's here. what I'm gonna say. I wonder if Andre saw our freestyle. It's like, do you like this typical cipher we did over this typical rap beat? Andre doesn't listen hater. to rap music. Well, who really the hater? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> who who's really the hater? Me or him? That is kind of some hater shit when somebody said your artist, because Killer Mike and him go back. Like it ain't no like some <laughs> random dude. Rap this rap Killer rap. Mike. You send him a record, he said, man, it sound like a typical rap song, man. All I'm saying is Really? A man, Come on, man. All I'm saying is as a man that has an ego and is known to be a little bit cocky sometimes, Mike, I can know it when I see it. I know exactly what that was. It's like, oh, you think this guy humble, don't you? I bet y'all think he humble because he in Japan playing a flute. That might have been his way of saying the song's whack. How would he know what a (laughs) whack song is, Mike? How would he know? What the fuck song you been recording lately that we should be? What's in the future for Gunner? Mike, he ain't made a classic song since She Lives in My Lap. What year is that? In my personal opinion, that's his best record. And when you were talking about him as a creative. That's him. That's the record I would point to. If you ask me, like, what is Andre as a... As an artist, as a creator, yeah, as pro- an individual, Prototype I would go, she lives, she in, my lives in my lap. Yeah, yeah, and what year was that? I mean, that's 03, and it's then not even say, a rap then song. He, then he need to say less and do more. Yeah, 20 years ago. Need to say less and do more is what he need to do, typical rap song. 